Speed 20 km an hour, temperature 90 degrees. 80 and a half. And... Alright, we're doing well, Igor. Can we go below 50? 51. I will explain. MSI offered to check out the new 2 and 3 section AIO. They look nice with lots of RGB. I guess their performance is also good. But um, do you really need a liquid cooler in the first place? I built a system with the Ryzen 8700G. 8 cores, new architecture, power consumption is about 100 watts, and everything is cooled by a single cooler. This is important. On low settings, Cyberpunk runs at around 50 FPS with mediocre frame time. Overall, it's playable. The box cooler manages the game somehow, but as soon as I crank the Cinebench, the temperature immediately hits 95 degrees. At this moment, the fan buzzes very annoyingly. Partly to blame is the old case. Many people upgrade gradually, leaving the case for last, just like here. A small fan in the back, a solid wall in the front, clearly the ventilation is bad. We need some more. That's better. Even Cinebench scored more points because the processor has more thermal headroom. Although case is the secondary reason. The main problem is the cooler. If you've been in PC gaming for a long time, you probably have an old cooler laying around and collecting dust for several years. It might come in handy. If its user manual mentions support for socket, AM2, AM3 or AM4 and it uses those plastic mounts that come with the motherboard, then there is a good chance that it's even compatible with the socket AM5. In other words, the cooler you used to cool an ancient <laughs> AMD Phenom, for example, might fit here, like this deep cool. It first appeared somewhere around 2012, when the AM3 socket existed. And now I just use it for Ryzen 8000 series with no problems. Oddly enough, the temperature increased in Cinebench. But that's because the processor realized it has more cooling capacity and simply gave more power. The difference in Cyberpunk is more noticeable. The frequency increased, the temperature dropped, as well as the noise. Another advantage of a tower cooler is its ease of modification. You can change the fan or add another, uh, but to me it's too simple. I'm interested in finding out where the real limit for such tower cooler is. Do you really need a liquid cooling or you can just give the cooler you already own, let's say, better conditions. Right now it's 1 degree Celsius outside, the perfect temperature. Any lower and condensation may start to form on the computer, I don't want to kill the system. Any higher and the results aren't as good. Speaking of which, the temperature dropped by only 10 degrees, but the power consumption increased significantly, so I can't directly compare these numbers. But Cyberpunk is more stable and gives more impressive results, only 50 degrees throughout the entire run. Fantastic, exactly what I was hoping for. And this is using the standard 80mm fan. It's good for most operations, because decent temperature is achieved with low noise level. Uh, good for most operations. But I can sacrifice with my comfort to, uh, to further improve the radiator airflow. Temperature 95 degrees, speed 20 km an hour, 20 is a bit low, 92 degrees, 40 km an hour, temperature drops, no one at pedestrian crossing and I think the monitor won't survive another flight like that.
speed 36 km an hour, 38, and temperature is already dropping, 90, and I stop, 83 and a half, 83. What if I accelerate to 60 now? That is the reason why I stuck with an APU and didn't use the discrete graphics. Oncoming wind can simply rip it out of the slot. 50, 80 and a half, and street ends at count of 3. 1, 2, 3, I need to stop. It turns out all my tests can be thrown away in a trash bin. The Ryzen 8700G behaves very strangely when applying loads specifically on the CPU cores, like when you run Cinebench. In the same conditions, with the same cooler, it can start with 80 degrees and literally jump to 95 within a couple of minutes. Nonsense. Fortunately, the problem goes away if you create a combined load when the iGPU is used alone with the CPU. For example, in Cyberpunk. This means I need to redo all the tests. Just for the context, here how it looks. I've got Windows here, and Igor is holding the computer. Alright, hold it like this. Speed 20 km an hour, temperature 90 degrees. Well, actually 20 isn't enough, it's a bit too slow. My face didn't think so. Alright, let's go, I'm accelerating to 40 now. Alright, 88, 87. Alright, we're doing well, Igor. Okay, we passed the roughest part. 73 degrees. 65, the final result. So, 60 kilometers an hour. Are you alive? All right, temperature is 58. 56. 55. Can we go below 50? 51. 49. That's it. That's it. Yeah, we're done. We're done. Все, все, все. Ты живой? Слезы, сука. Все, мы все сделали. <laughs> Many tests have been conducted, and it's time to make sense of them. Firstly, you should not take the computer outside without a fan at all. Or stick it out of the car at just 20 km an hour. Even in cold weather, it won't be enough to... to match the stock result when the computer is indoors. In a closed case, with a box cooler. There will be some difference at 40 km an hour, then the stock cooler will lag behind. There will also be thoughts about what you're spending your life on. Cause you can just leave the system in the cold and achieve better temps. Finally, the best result at 60 km an hour, only 47 degrees. That's a head blowing result. Head blowing for the slave holding the computer if you suddenly hit the brakes. And you know what you can add to the chart right here? A 360mm AIO. In a warm room, a slave is not needed. Just build the computer in a well-ventilated case. Although I would pay attention to this result when the system is installed in a case with a terrible ventilation and the fans are barely spinning to avoid unnecessary noise. Obviously, 8700G from the video doesn't need such cooling. It's enough to choose a decent tower with four heat pipes for a good balance between noise and temperature. That's what I do. But maybe you want a temperature reserve. Or to overclock something. Or to buy a K-series Intel. Or you want a nice look. Or you have a childhood unresolved issues. Or you compensate. Then welcome to the world of liquid cooling. Most of you should consider models with at least two fans. They still cost reasonable money and can already handle something like Core i7-13700K with 16 cores. MSI E240, which you can see on the screen, keeps it at 78 degrees when dissipating 150 watts. The noise level is good, there's even some margin for overclocking, up to around 200, maybe 220 watts, but in this case the fans are gonna spin like crazy. For such tasks, a 3-fan option is better suited, as in my video with the MSI E360. The upper limit is somewhere around 240 watts when building a system with a closed case and around 260 to 70 watts if you choose a well-ventilated case. That's if we're talking about extremes. For everyday use, both models can be configured for quiet operation during gaming. In, ge in general, this is the main reason why liquid cooling is chosen in the first place.
The key is to determine how low of a noise level you want. These systems can work quietly in the background, but not completely silently. That is the main complaint about both systems. They will always produce some sound, some noise. The second complaint is that the hoses are a bit too long. If you decide to install the two fan version on the top panel, you'll have to move closer to the front of the case. Otherwise, the top hose will be under a lot of tension. However, there's more versatility for front panel installation. Other than that, they are decent coolers. But them at least you can take the computer off the car roof. Of course, in exchange for dollars in your pocket. Thank you for your support and for hitting the like button. Subscribe for more videos. My name is Roman. See you.